Now, since the middle of last year, the price of Kenyan tea in the global market has been on the decline, with the average price of a kilo of Kenyan tea having plunged by up to a third of its value the beginning of last year. Now, that downturn is taking a heavy toll on the hundreds of thousands of farmers who depend on this sector for a livelihood. Now, to discuss more about what's happening in Kenya's number one foreign currency earner, we have in studio Lerionka Tiampati, that's the managing director of the Kenya Tea Development Agency. Thank you so much um, for joining us. Now, we're talking just before we um, started off the bulletin, and you said prices have actually fallen from $3 to $2 a kilo as per last week. What would you say is a major cause of the drop in tea prices? Uh, thank you, Terry. I think the, the major cause of this drop in prices uh, has been very good weather. Um, from the year 2012, we had a continuous rains through uh, into 2013, and you will recall. Uh, up to our election, mm -hmm. we had uh, very, very heavy rains, and as a result, there was heavy production of tea. Then, something else that happened um, just before the elections, um, uh, traders took a view um, that they would want to hedge, buy teas, and stock because of the experiences they had in the year 2008. Mm -hmm. They thought there would be violence in this country, and when there wasn't, uh, a lot of them were left with uh, huge stocks of tea, uh, bought at very high prices, and then the market started uh, dropping. Now, uh, 2013 up to now, we've also had very, very good rains, and we have another huge crop this year, probably equal or more than last year. So we have a situation where we have last year over 60 million kilos of tea over and above the normal uh, quantity of tea that uh, the market can take. Mm -hmm. The same is happening this year, mm -hmm. and therefore there is a glut in the market, and it's not just in Kenya, in, uh, generally in the East African region, uh, in Uganda, in Tanzania, uh, in Burundi and uh, Malawi, the tea volumes have been very, very high in this region. Mm -hmm. And you can attribute this to climate change because this kind of weather patterns mm -hmm. uh, we haven't seen in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, they are a bit strange. <clears throat> but um, I'm very optimistic that uh, the tea industry is in good shape. Mm -hmm. These are uh, phenomena that will come and go yes. and they will stabilize. Okay. However, um, until we push out these uh, extra stocks of tea through the system, uh, we are likely to be uh, faced with these uh, low prices uh, for a bit of time to come. Okay. Now, recently we've had farmers um, complaining about the mini dividends many of them did not receive. What exactly is going on? And is there a chance of them uh, getting the dividends, the bonus rather, the mini dividends? Okay. Let me just explain that uh, every month we pay farmers uh, uh, a monthly payment, uh, 14 shillings, to enable them to cover the costs of their operations. And this we have been doing. Now, in half year, certain factories normally do pay their farmers between three and five shillings of what they call a mini bonus. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the year, they pay them a second payment. Yes. Now, with the sharp drop in uh, tea prices by up to 30%, obviously this posed a problem in terms of cash flow uh, to a number of factories. And therefore, we did give them some uh, uh, advisory uh, to suspend this mini bonus as the cash flow situation stabilizes for the factories. Mm -hmm. However, the monthly payment is being paid as usual, and they will be paid their bonus at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've got some questions um, coming through f from farmers who we spoke to um, from different places where tea is grown, um, and I understand that should be playing right about now. <laughs> Silingi kumi na ene, haitoshi kwa sababu Unakaa hiyo silingi kumi na ene kwa mambo mengi Nataka kuulisa swali kuhusu ni makarani walifutwa hizi wa pesa za makarani siri enda wapi Kaulisa kwa hini bataleisa inachelewa Na wanautuzia kwa daikari ni kwa nini Inaweza kuwa na chai mingi Mingi ingine kubwa ingine indogo Sasa tume tu, tuli hakikishiwa Lazima tupuni chai kwa mwaka, mala moja kwa mwaka Ni kwa nini? Kuligia na vile mkulima analima majani ya kichai ya nalipa pesa mingi kushinda hile ya napata Sasa sisi huwa tunawanerea kwamba kulima, yaani kulima maziwa ama kueka ngombe diyo hile kitu tunapata faida kidogo Nijataka sisi wenyewe tujisimamie Kiwe katika hili zoom kila factory inajisimamia yenyewe kwa sababu sijaona sija agents ambao wana wanajilipa wao wenyewe alafu wanatulipa baadaye 
sasa mtu walikuwa zina lia kwa gedi dia kupelekea hata sisi kwa wenda chuo hata kama nimevaa vivi fodi hata kupea ile nausa kwa majani kwa maana majani na usanga ni tat e, kwa kilo kutatua hii matatizo yote ya wakulima wa Kenya wa majani chai small scale tea growers jawabu ni tuondolewe huyu mnyama anaitwa KTDA katika factory tuliruhusiwe tuwe na directors wawili mmoja awe director manager na mwingine awe ni director na na county government wa manage area yao ndio kuwe na ushindani hii mambo ya monopoly ndio ime, imeharibu Kenya sababu monopoly is 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 equivalent to corruption seems to be quite some disgruntlement there with farmers um, across different parts of the country and perhaps you can just start with the last one um, especially about KTDA I don't know what you would tell the farmers about that uh, thank you Terian um, it's interesting uh, it looks like the, uh, selectively uh, the farmers were chosen to speak in the manner that they were speaking I don't see why you have not spoken to uh, some farmers who have something positive to talk about KTDA KTDA is a farmers organization mm -hmm. Um, it's been there for the last 50 years. It has served farmers well. Mm -hmm. uh, the farmers have invested. They own uh, the factories. They own KTDA. They elect the directors mm -hmm. who run the factories, who run KTDA. So the issue of KTDA being uh, foreign to the farmers does actually not arise. Mm -hmm. Now, the issue of fertilizer, every year we do buy fertilizer for the farmers. Yes. Uh, and through a credit scheme through with the banks, we're able to buy the fertilizer at very good prices. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, 30% below the market price mm -hmm. and um, uh, this comes at about uh, August, uh, September so we're able to apply during the, uh, the short range mm -hmm. and we have done that every year apart from one year when the price of fertilizer went through the roof mm -hmm. this year we have ordered the fertilizer and they will be delivered to farmers as usual mm -hmm. now in terms of uh, the, how, how much farmers are paid uh, if you talk to the different farmers from different factories you get as many different points of view mm -hmm. as there are farmers. Yes. <coughs> there are many farmers who do not wish to receive more than 14 shillings uh, every month because the more, when you increase the price, uh, this goes to plackers and other kind of people. Mm -hmm. So there are those who want the 14 shillings, there are those who want more. Mm -hmm. But the point is, at the end of the year, mm -hmm. um, the, the initial payment plus the bonus, if you look at what we have been paying our farmers over the years, mm -hmm. it is better than any farmer anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, can, I can ask you to take that to the bank. Mm -hmm. They are the best paid farmers. Yes. And therefore, um, I don't think that uh, a lot of uh, the other farmers are complaining about. All right. And of course, Mr. Champat, it's not that we were trying to put KTD in bad light. We just wanted you to hear the grievances of the farmers who are disgruntled. But thank you so much uh, <laughs> for joining us in studio today and, of course, sh shedding light on the issues um, facing uh, the tea farmers. In, in the country. Well,